Good morning. Welcome to Park Talks. This is Daniel. Park it, and let's talk about it. Go. February 21st, mission critical. If you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Luke 16.10. So much time and basic training in the military is devoted to disassembling a rifle, cleaning it, and putting it back together. It's a monotonous task that feels like a punishment. It would be easy to skip some steps and get and to the job halfway. If you could be life-threatening in a combat zone, you carry your weapon with you constantly, and no one is responsible for its well-being but you. You can't depend on someone else to save you when your weapon jams because you were too lazy to clean it that morning. Jesus' teaching in Luke 16 highlights that the best proof of a man's fitness for a bigger assignment is the way he fulfills a smaller assignment. On earth, we are in charge of things that are not really ours. We are only stewards of them, but the reward we will receive in heaven depends largely on how we use things on earth. Good stewardship now will be rewarded later. In other words, if a man can't properly handle worldly wealth, he can't be trusted with the true riches of heaven. Integrity is when we obey in realms that are unenforceable, those areas that no one sees but God. Who would you rather trust to save your life? The guy who cleaned his rifle thoroughly, or the guy who polished the outside of his rifle but never cleaned the inner parts? Faithfulness in the little things matter a great deal. It's part of living with integrity. Bottom line, ask God to make you a man of clean parts on the inside as well as the outside. Psalms 51, 6 through 13. Like I alluded to last week, we were focusing on uh, pride. The week before that was lust. This week, we're looking at greed and a few things around greed. First of all, what is it? It is an uncontrollable longing or in, for increase in an acquisition or use of material gain. Not limited to food, money, land, inanimate or animate possessions, or even social value such as status or power. Greed has been identified as undesirable throughout known history human history because it creates behavior conflicts between personal and social goals. In Exodus 2017, we look at the word covet. Greed and covet are very, very, if not closely related, they're almost synonymous with each other. Okay, We hear, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. That would be greed. Covet your neighbor's wife. That'd be lust. Or his male or female servants, which would be now be pride, the way the servants look to, respond to, and act for him. Or ox and his donkey, or anything of your neighbors. Okay. So, where does that lie in the human body? Greed. It shows up in the mind. Before anywhere else, it shows up in the mind. But wait a minute, let's backpedal a little bit. Where does pride show up at first? In the mind. And then it goes to the heart. What about lust? And then the heart. What about forgiveness? Uh uh. In the heart. Yeah. Kindness from the heart to the head. It's an emotion. Yeah. Okay. You're going to feel it. That's a little bit weird. Why? Because you're a miserable person. You're feeling like a good emotion. All of a sudden, that weirdness makes you think well, maybe I'm in a good mood right now. And then you don't have to be. A lot of people choose to be in a bad mood. You don't have to be greedy. There's, I was looking around going, okay, well, we looked at different things. What is like uh, the you know opposites of greed? And I was talking with my wife about this, and we just really couldn't figure it out. But it came down again to thought. You see, Jesus, and we're going to use, we're going to borrow the scripture that we talked about last week. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and plate, but the inside is full of greed and self-indulgence. The inside. Could they possibly be talking about thought? What is the opposite of greed? Generous? Yeah, generosity. Yeah, generosity. Okay. So a readiness or liberally in giving, um, a freedom of meaningness or smallness of mind or character, a generosity, or just like a generous act. Another opposite of greed would be kind have to be kind to somebody if you're not going to be greedy to them. Uh, a state or quality of being kind, such as kindness to animals, and a kind act or a favor. 
Also, opposite of greed, I found giving. To bestow voluntarily or without exception, comprehension, bestow, to place in someone's care. Okay. When it comes to giving, we're talking about the opposite of greed. We're literally looking at, let's look to call this the G-force. Because that's really what it is. Are we going to give? If, they give? if you're going to be greedy, greedy does what? It wants to self-absorb for all itself. There's not really a heart of enough. It's got to be bigger, faster, better, more of, and then tell everybody about it. That's where pride kicks in. Tell the little honeys about it. Now you get your lust kicking in there. They work as literally three wheels in a cog. So if they're giving that, are they giving their all? Are they giving off the top? Are they giving because mom and dad did? Are they giving to feel good about things that they do? Are they giving because the Bible says to? Are they giving so they get a position of control? Are they giving so they get later? So I brought this down to this particular qualifier here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little qualifiers. Okay. Where would that yes fall in? Are they giving their all? Yes. Are they giving off the top? Yes. Are they giving because mom and dad did? Yes. Now we have a pattern. We have a habit. Are they giving because it feels good? Now we have an emotional to it. Uh, are they giving because the Bible says to have a spiritual? Are they giving for a position of control? Wait a minute, red flag. Because if you're giving, and you have anything in your giving has self-desire in it, keep it. Yeah. Keep it. It's all inward. Keep it. Yeah. If you're giving for the sole purpose to get later or position yourself for better later, keep it. Yeah, that's where I don't agree with a lot of pastors that say, so, so you're seeing. Yeah. You know, so you can get later. And it's not what it's I've about. had people ask me if they could give to this ministry, and I'm like, I'm even trouble calling it that. This mm -hmm. is just a couple guys hanging out in the park talking about something. This is what God's laid on my heart, your heart, and talk about it, you know, iron sharpening iron. But ministry, yeah, it's in the title for you to see ministry, for you to be sharp. But God's taking care of me. I got it, it's it's covered, you know. So what do we pay for this pavilion we're under? <laughs> Tax dollars, right? Yeah. So whoops. So why are we here? Because we're giving of our time. But it's cold. Yeah. When you know what to do right. Nothing should deter you from that. When you know what you're doing is right and you're positively influencing others for God and you see growth in their life, what is more important? Exactly. Interesting is, uh, I've heard different sermons with pastors and I've been kind of adopting this once in a while too. They'll go through different versions of the Bible and they'll, you know, Type a word in there, see how many times it shows up. So KJV, greed, 10 times. Pride, 46, and lust, 53. NIV, greed is 21. Pride is 63, and lust is down to 40 or 31. ESV, greed is up to 25. Pride is at 51, and lust is at 23. Read all three of them. Sometimes it helps make a sense. You know, seriously, when you make macaroni and cheese... You don't have to put a, chop a hot dog up in it or throw some hamburger in it or cut some sausage up in it or throw some seafood in there. But you could. You don't have to just read the KJV. You don't have to just read the ESV or NIV. If that's the only one you really get right now, grow where you're at. Take what you can get. The corn doesn't go, I don't like that flavor of fertilizer. <laughs> right? <laughs> when did you ask the dog its favorite flavor of dog food? I'm sure the dog didn't go up to the store and pick it out. And if they did, they were just hungry in the moment and smelled something funny. Okay? Now, let's jump down to Proverbs. Why is greed so such a big issue, especially in the church? Proverbs leads us to the fact on that one. The greedy stir up conflict. <laughs> and who wants that? You know, Pastor said this morning, you know, you, you, why do you fight? Why do you argue? It's in James. Because you see and you don't have. That's greed. Yeah. He also was talking about Passover and Jesus going in there with the whip. Wait a minute. Why was he in there? Greed. It was greed. That entire situation was motivated by greed. Is there greed in the church? Many of them. Oh, yeah. Many of them. Do I, can I name churches? No, I'm not going to. 
but it's there. I've attended churches in my life where that offering plate on a Sunday morning will be passed two or four times. And I don't mean pass it once, immediately pass it again. They've got a reason to collect here and a reason to collect there and a reason to collect there. they got a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. And they're helping a lot of people. But man, at what point are you picking your people so thin? I've known pastors who drive very nice cars and literally live on 10% of their income though. I've known pastors who drive very nice cars and not tithe. So don't look at the car and judge the man. If you haven't looked at his giving statement and his bank account and his schedule, who are you to judge? Let me see yours. <laughs> For real. Yeah. You know the most people that complain the most about what pastors do in life don't tie the dollar nor go to church? So what happens if they started going to church? They'd probably learn about the guy, they'd probably learn about the family and the practices of the family, but they might even turn it around and realize, you know something? Maybe I met a couple of bad ones, but they're not all like that. The Bible does call to assemble ourselves together as a body of believers and worship God. It does. This is not to forget to do that. It's not just go to church and you put the sermon on a fork and I'll sit there and maybe eat it if my phone doesn't get in the way. Because trust me, the enemy knows how to make a text message that you don't want to read show up in the middle of the most important part that God wants the pastor to say to you. In Romans 1, 28 through 31, furthermore, just like they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a deprived mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become wicked with all kinds of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil and disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Would you say that things such as homosexual acts would drive over into greed? We already know it's there in pride and lust. I guess it should be because you're all... It's all about you. It's, yeah, it's all yeah. about you. It's all about get, 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 more, 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 more. That's great. When is enough? It's all about pride. I mean, they put it in their name. They try to just, they, they take an exact word that the enemy likes to use to destroy people and use it as their title representation. You know, it's interesting about the rainbow. It's a promise, right? Yeah. Promise God won't destroy it, the world with water. But it's a promise that he will destroy sin. It's evidence that he did. It's kind of throwing God's promise right back in his face. Yeah, exactly. Not really. Well, <laughs> he made the rainbow. I mean, <laughs> it's little. Okay, so how can I find out if there's greed in me? That's a heck of a mirror to look in right there. Yeah. Well, reflectively speaking, Look at the words that you use, and if they're the person who uses the me, my, and I statements in the context for their self, I want, I need, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm, I want, you know, that's all greed. Look at me would be, for me, the way I see it here is, I see it like I is lust, me is pride, and my or is all selfish greed. That's kind of where it, it falls. Now, is there healthy levels of those words? Yeah, I need to study this. I, sh I, I am going to pray more. I am going to fast. But if it's, I know, I want, I need, I do, then it's unhealthy. Same thing with me and mine. They can be healthy levels, but we don't execute them as healthy levels. Use those as greedy points. Me and myself and my will also look like I want, hoarding, gathering. So, to covet, like I said, this word closely relates in there with greed. As a verb, it's used to desire wrongfully or inordinarily or without due regret for the rights of others, to wish for or especially or eagerly. To have an inordinate or wrongful desire. Daniel 4.30. Remember the king? 
This is the Great Babylon I have built as a royal residence by my power and by the glory of my majesty. Remember that? Then he was running with the dogs, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. God struck him down. Running with the dogs. Animals. Greed. That's all greed. If we was to look in Daniel uh, chapter 5, the very next chapter, we'll find greed in, in through verses 1 through 4. I didn't put them in here. You'll find greed and pride showing up again. This is where the king has got all the goblets, the gold and silver, you know, vessels up from the from Babylon, and he's drinking and celebrating with all of He's just, look at all the stuff I got. This was my dad's King Nebuchadnezzar had this stuff, blah, blah, blah. So that's when you find greed coming out again. This week, me and my wife were talking, and we met, we talked to several people. I'm, I'm estimating this head count to be about 60 people. And we looked at pride, lust, and greed. That's your three categories, okay? And we asked, where would you personally put the word covet? Where does it fall? Is it pride, lust, or greed? What do you think, David? Pride, greed. Probably being greed, but it almost blends in all three. It, it actually does. You're absolutely correct. And next week, I believe the focus is going to be how all three of these combine together to affect our life in such a most negative pattern. And how we can individually, or how us with God on board, can bring them back to a healthy pattern of life. That's what I'm, I feel next week's going to be. So it's interesting that you, you said greed. Um, my wife actually said that lust would be primary, which we most people we talked to, lust kind of grew really fast. Um, but greed, it was pride, 12. Lust, 18, and greed, 20. So it's kind of interesting how, how pride and greed are so closely in there on that. Real quick, Ronnie. Pride, lust, and greed, three categories. Okay? Mm -hmm. In those three categories, where do you put the word covet? Pick one. For you. Pride, lust, or greed. Covet. Like greed? No, there's another one. You said the same thing. Okay, yeah. I, I was on greed also. So... That takes greed up to 22. It's kind of interesting. Out of 62 asked, there's a 22 on greed. Okay, so where does greed show up? In our language, right? We talked about me, my, and I. How does that, how does that actually roll over in life? How about like my shows, my job, my kids, my pharmaceuticals, my pills, my medical condition, my house, my car, my friends? What's mine is mine. Yeah. Well, you're claiming that is yours. Yeah. No, okay, that's my house. All right, you make the payments on it. You clean it. You keep the lights on. That's where you raise your family. When you die, where does the house go if it's yours? It stays. You don't. Okay? My job. What if they say no more? It ain't your job no more. It's the job you go to. doesn't have to be a job. It could be some of the best time of your life. Your kids? Guess what? They're on loan also. And if you don't treat them as if they're a gift from God, I don't know. If I give you a gift and you mistreat it and don't raise it properly, how many more gifts should I really give you? How long should you keep the one you got? And that's where my car falls apart. <laughs> that's where my friendships fall apart. Okay, how about, here's a my for you. How about my sins? How about my thoughts? Now, wait, sins. Wait, wait. I thought you were born again, Danny. I thought you gave your sins to God. Yeah, yeah. Past sins. Yeah. We don't need to talk about them. They're buried. Yeah. They're buried. The enemy likes to try and bring them up. Oh, yeah. All the time. Absolutely. Making you go back. Right. And but why go backwards? No. <laughs> Do you know the rear view mirror is like one-tenth of the windshield size? Yeah. <laughs> For a reason. Yeah. Yeah, the enemy is constantly trying to remind you of your past. So that goes into my thoughts and my choices then, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because where does the enemy take you back? In thought. Mm -hmm. You know you're only lonely in thought. Yeah. You're never lonely except in thought, and that's only if you accept a lot. Here's another couple of my's that I like. My surrender. My relationship. My redemption. My legacy. My sacrifice. My savior. Those are healthy my's. Proverbs 8.8. 8, All the words of my mouth are just. 
None of them are crooked or preserved. Who can live up to that? Why not? Pride, lust, and greed. How we process pride, lust, and greed in our life. When you have a person who uses pride, me, my, and I in their conversation, I can find you somebody who is full of their self and their wants and their desires. If you are under the influence of greed, you may not be able to truly be present with others. Your attention is somewhere else rather than those who you're relating with and those who are relating with you. You are concerned with acquiring somebody else, even their attention, even if you already have attention of others. Imagine trying to talk in a satisfying way to somebody who has not eaten in a week or is extremely thirsty. His or her thoughts are on the next meal or oasis. Imagine trying to be intimate with somebody who's already planning a stra their strategy of their next sexual conquest, since he or she has obviously already conquered you. An alcoholic is not present, nor neither is a drug taker. If you are not present, you have very little presence. Presence is the result of focusing your attention on what is immediate, not elsewhere. There are impacts on your relationships with greed. If you're a greedy person, you demand in your relationships you are greed or you are great, but your willingness to satisfy the needs of others are limited. You want everything from your partner, including affection, attention, understanding, and sympathy, but refuse to give it. You resent the slightest inattentiveness or insecurity demonstrated by your partner or mate. You desperately need the love of your mate, but are resentful and hostile towards him or her for not always delivering what you need. Your resentment undermines the relationship while your greed drives your partner away. In more committed relationships, you may become unfaithful in order to punish the partner for unfailing to do, for failing to deliver or you may be unfaithful out of your greed to find a more attentive partner your spouse may become unfaithful just as a way of getting away from you relationships cannot tolerate greed for long greed is designed by its very nature to ambush relationships and to destroy them the two are by nature incapable there's actually an impact on your spiritual life too the paradox introduced by the greed dragon is at times most obvious in the spiritual realm. Greed and all the other dragons infiltrate all the areas of religion spirit, and spirituality with no exception. Hunger for spiritual truth sometimes becomes a vicious consumption of religious teaching. If you're bitten by the dragon of greed, you may collect gurus and spiritual teachers that have so many butterflies, yet no one teacher is ever the right one. And you may keep searching and searching, but never find. Every other week, you covet something else. If you are in a spiritual community, you may be greedy to be in the presence of the guru or teacher at all times. You may compete fiercely to see if you can be the closest to the guru or the favorite of the cardinal, bishop, pope, priest, priest, pastor. At some events, you'll actually find people getting trampled trying to get in to see some of these mm -hmm. spiritual leaders. Remember in the Bible, there was a time when they literally ripped the roof off the building to get somebody in to a spiritual leader, a teacher. So this even comes straight out of Scripture. The, the greed gets fixated on the power and the pride they have in that person and the pedestal they put that person on. They did it to Jesus. The pedestal's not around. Put him on a cross. Everybody's got to look up. Spiritual materialism has been, has been around at least as long as religion. The idea that you can collect brownie points for heaven by buying forgiveness through donations and contribu contributions to a church or a temple has greed at its source. If you are the greedy soul, you may believe that a more expensive ritual sacrifice issues salvation. 
The notion that you get to heaven by demonstrating material success is another distortion based on greed. Do we need it in our life? There's absolutely no healthy level of greed that I can come up with. No. Greed is where want sleeps. And if God says, I'll supply your need, there's no need for greed. Does it mean that you take what you have and you manage it effectively and well? As if you could go to God with your chuck ledger and go, here's what it looks like. And not only did I do it like you said, I did it on time like you said. And God, I even did better than what you said when I could. You know, you were watching. Don't be prideful in what you give, but be proud of what you give. Prideful counts up every month. I gave this, I gave this, I gave this. Prideful tells everybody. That becomes greedy now. I want that. Oh, good job. Oh, this guy gives more than that guy. Okay. But what happens if the only time you even count what you give is when you file your taxes? Yeah. What happens if people who go, man, I can't pay 10%. I can't afford that. You scratch your head going, I really can't afford to go back to 10%. God's blessings are there. Mm hmm. Hmm. You find somebody who's faithful in tithing and offerings, and you'll find somebody who has, personally, I believe, not beat the demon of, be of greed, but they have a pretty good handle on it. I'll tell you this right now, just from, from a new song I just left. And, uh, uh, I was talking to a gentleman about what we do after church, mm -hmm. and he gave me money, and I'm just like, no, I don't need it, sir. I know nothing. I'm, you know, I said, use it to buy Bibles for your ministry. And I'm like... No, don't. we don't buy Bibles. No, we don't. No, we don't. So. But I was just like, you know, I, you know, but put an envelope for him. Put an envelope. Yeah, just put an envelope, stick it in your drawer somewhere. I know. I, I didn't want to take it. That's okay. If I people want to give you, if like, people want to offer, because giving, like giving, and like uh, later on the road, it just came to my mind. Well, maybe there's somebody else that might need it. Over no, just put it in an envelope. Okay. We'll use it down the road. Okay. It's given to the ministry. We will thank you. Yeah, to I, whoever I did. gave I told it. Can I pray for you? family, you know, and yeah. I did actually, when I got in the car, you know, I was like, bless them, God bless them. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And if, if you, if, you know. Because that, and that's what it's about as far as like, with one another. If After, you know yeah. Christians is, is coming together during this hard time. And, and people will come to us if the ministry touches them or if they feel influenced by, by what we do here, people will come to us and they're going to want to pour into it. That's, yeah. we can't stop that. Right. But we need to be wise with what we have. I just wanted to share that with you, gentlemen, and I was just like... That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Well, this is Daniel. Thank you for joining with Park Talks this week. Be blessed, everyone.